Good afternoon, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. AutoAppraise.com, we're out on the west side of the state today looking at a pretty interesting third gen car, 1982. Dave Goding is the owner of this vehicle and uh, I would normally narrate some cool stuff to you about what's been done, but there is so much here to comprehend. It is difficult to keep in memory. I'm gonna hop under the car first and talk about what's been done with the structure and suspension. Dave, tell us about this uh, frame and this whole substructure, what's been done. Well, it's the third gens are obviously unibody. So uh, what the, the floor pan is, is intact, but it's cut off behind the, uh, rear, the, behind the front seats. There's a, a two by four by eight wall rectangular tube that runs crossways that ties the original trailing arm mounts together and also ties into the tunnel and ties into the floor pan. Uh, running forward from that are two three inch by one and a half inch rectangular tubes that are spaced on either side of the tunnel. Up here. And then they go forward to another two by four rectangular tube that runs crossways between the uh, unibody frame members. So the original unibody frame members then are boxed into the uh, three by one inch longitudinal tubes uh, and the uh, there's uh, the rear frame then is is built uh, using the two by four tube at the rear uh, as a primary uh, structural member and the, the rear frame then is built out of two by two square tubes with some diagonal uh, round tube uh, reinforcement and that in turn is tied into the uh, roll bar at, at the back of the seats that uh, forms the upper part of the frame structure. So the, the frame structure in the rear is actually two levels spaced about a foot apart oh. that the uh, rear trailing arms attached to. It's amazing. We'll go back and look at those in a second. Uh, running down the center of the two main uh, beams through the center of the car, you've got all your braided lines and... Yeah, the there's five braided lines, two power steering, two air conditioning, and uh, one for vacuum. The Also in the tunnel is the accelerator cable the uh, shift cable, and then there's some larger diameter pipes that are carrying the coolant to and from the radiator, mm -hmm. and a third smaller pipe that's carrying the, um, uh, the heater line to the front, uh, and also the two fuel lines. The, it's a return type system, yeah. so there's a fuel supply and return line. All tucked up in there nicely. What about the front control arms? I see our, our GM lower control arms. What's been uh, done yeah, there? Yeah, those are uh, standard uh, third gen control arms, but they've been modified to go from a coil spring suspension uh, to an air spring suspension. And the uh, ball joint has been replaced with a, a Chrysler style thread and ball joint. Uh, we don't have great light down there, but uh, I got still photos of that. I'm going to pause and go to the back. There is much, much to discuss back here. Let's. Uh... So first of all, you can see the the two inch rectangular tubes that that run longitudinally and and support the lower control arms, uh, and then the diagonal braces that uh, keep them square. The uh, rear uh, fenders have been uh, tubbed, basically. Uh, Let's take a look at that. And, and a uh, new control arms, uh, both upper and lower, along with the hub carriers, are all custom fabricated. You made all those? Yes. And you got dual airbag mounts. 
Yeah, because of the uh, axle shaft uh, running obviously right down the center uh, to uh, carry the load as well as distribute the load evenly on the lower control arm, I chose to design it with two uh, uh, air springs instead of just a single. The car, because of the, the heavy transaxle, heavy big block Chevy, the car is uh, about 2,800 pounds on the rear, so I uh, need a substantial uh, spring force to uh, support that weight. I should have mentioned early on in the video that this is a rear engine modification, and obviously you guys watching are seeing that now, going, wow, this is not, this is not what we expected. Yeah. Um, those, uh, that transmission's out of a 16, it's a 425 turbo out of a front-wheel drive Toronado? Correct, yep. It uses a 307 final drive uh, that's part of the transaxle. They call it a final drive instead of a differential, but one and the same. There's actually a tube passing through the oil pan that carries the axle shaft from the uh, left side of the engine over to the right. Uh, there's a, a disc brake and caliper uh, for the parking brake on the uh, right side uh, inner. Uh, you can see, and then the uh, I'm using the Tornado CV joints, which are very large, heavy-duty uh, CV joints. Mm -hmm. uh, custom length axle shafts uh, made by Moser for me, uh, but I'm using the uh, outer CV joint going into a three-quarter ton Chevy uh, front-wheel drive truck hub from a late model truck. Turns out the Toronado and the late model Chevy use the same spline pattern. Wow. So uh, by making some spacers to get the spacing right, uh, I was able to uh, use a very heavy duty uh, bearing unit. Uh, and the bearing is placed uh, properly at the center of the tire, so the uh, moment on the bearing is, uh, is not a problem. It's right, the load's evenly distributed as it should be, huh? Yes. Uh, what do we got for wheels and tires on there? Let me uh, take a quick peek at those. And I guess while we're under here, what do we got for exhaust? Yeah, the uh, exhaust is a 3-inch uh, uh, MagnaFlow X-pipe muffler. Uh, it, uh, the uh, two, two pipes cross over inside the muffler. So the inlet is on the forward side, and then the outlet's on the uh, rear side of the muffler in, in this application. Let's pop up and uh, take a look at these headers before we lift that uh, deck up which is electric. Dave these mirrors are Corvette mirrors off of what? A C5 Corvette. Modified. They're uh, power mirrors. Uh, they're uh, a little bit of grinding work and they are able to match the uh, contour of the doors and I think they off they look a lot nicer than the. Uh, I gotta go wrong. Eighty-five Trans Am tail lights molded into this eighty-two body. You were telling me about the T-tops earlier, not being original factory T-tops on an eighty-two body. Yes, these are uh, Cars and Concepts T-tops. Uh, turns out. Uh, in early uh, third gen production, uh, uh, dealers were installing aftermarket T tops. Uh, apparently, the factory didn't uh, release them early in the model build, and so Cars and Concepts had this uh, uh, kit that allowed T tops to be added to an existing car. Although, uh, a Cars and Concepts car will not look smooth like this because they've been molded in. Uh, as opposed to the Cars and Concepts rivets the uh, uh, structure into the body. But, uh, and you welded this all up this tight? This has been welded up and, and finished, so they look more integrated. Let's take a peek at your exhaust. Yeah, these are 180 degree firing order headers, meaning that the uh, firing of the cylinders within each collector is even. Every 180 degrees a crankshaft. Uh, it entails hooking up the middle two cylinders to the outer two cylinders on each bank uh, so that uh, the exhaust crisscrosses and, uh, and joins up uh, to give that uh, 
even firing in the in the collectors which uh, gives the car a different higher pitch sound uh, so the 604 uh, big block doesn't uh, sound so much like a big block uh, screams more yeah we'll fire it up here in a minute 604 tall tall deck tall deck uh, Chevy big block. bow tie block uh, 454 bow tie block that's been bored to uh, four and nine sixteenths and uh, it's got a Minotti uh, stroker crank at four and five eighths so it's uh, just a little over square and this Holly up upgraded ignition system yes uh, it's uh, Holly's uh, distributorless ignition where uh, they use what are called waste fire coils so each coil drives two plugs in the back there's uh, a cam sensor that uh, uh, also serves to drive the oil pump and replaces the distributor. Re replaces the distributor with the plug wires coming off the back. Yeah, so the uh, the coils uh, go directly to uh, uh, the plugs, coils mounted up front on the engine, and then the wiring for the coils distributes uh, around the side and under the headers. We've got the cover removed inside. There's a custom built fitted cover to uh, keep all the heat in the back so uh, we've got power steering and uh, on the lower passenger side is the uh, air conditioning compressor and then there's a 200 amp alternator I've got so many fans on this car that uh, need a <laughs> 200 amp alternator to keep up with them all yeah it gets pretty hot in here I would imagine you built a little window. That's uh, nice not only for light, but to see what's going on. Yeah, uh, you have limited visibility, but you can see through the rearview mirror out the back. Uh, uh, for uh, backing up, there's a rearview camera also that uh, uh, gets activated when the car is shifted into reverse. And you built these heat shields uh, to uh, keep the heat off the fiberglass? Exactly. The uh, headers radiate a lot of heat, so... Uh, these heat shields just to keep the fiberglass uh, cool. And then the... Uh, There's an oil cooler uh, for the engine oil. Uh, it's got a 10-inch fan on it. It draws outside air from uh, the ductwork that also serves the uh, intake to the air filter. Yeah, uh, custom plumbed right into the back of the deck. And then on the passenger side, there's a trans cooler that's built into the uh, side wall of the engine compartment. Uh, the cooler's on the other side of the wall, and it's drawing outside air that uh, gets exhausted into the engine compartment to just help flush out uh, some of the heat. Well, it's nice. Let's talk about this body. Yeah, so the body is uh, the steel... Uh, 82 Firebird, but it's it's covered with a styling kit. It was called a Handcraft GT 2 Plus 2. It was meant to uh, go right on top of the uh, stock Firebird body, keeping the engine in the front. Uh, uh, you do give up the rear seats if you put the styling kit on there, but uh, the styling kit basically included door skins, uh, some extended rocker panels, uh, new front fenders, new hood. Uh, it integrated the factory uh, Firebird uh, headlights. That's nice. And the seams are gone from where the fender seams normally are to bond to the uh, to bond to the bumper and kind of make it more of a one-piece surround. Yep. And the uh, uh, the uh, parking lights and the uh, turn signal lights are uh, Buick and Chevy. Uh, uh, from the 80s, uh, the air dam in front comes off a uh, Dodge Dakota pickup. And that's not really f uh, been cut or fabricated. It actually was somewhat, des you know, used in, in its yeah, normal the, form. Yeah, the body designer was able to integrate that into the... Uh, uh, and these are some custom-built uh, Z06 uh, C5 wheels? Yeah, they're reproductions of a Z06 uh, wheel, and uh, you can see there's 14-inch uh, uh, Willwood uh, brake rotors along with uh, Willwood six-piston calipers. Nice. And the, uh, the brakes are uh, uniform all the way around the car. Because of the weight bias in the rear of the car, 
during braking the weight shifts about equally to the front and rear wheels so uh, the right proportions are reached with the same size brakes on both ends well the car's got a really smooth uh smooth appearance body lines are really well done the paint's beautiful on this car uh, hard to believe it wasn't just painted a year or two ago yeah the uh the rear wheels are 19 by 12 and the front wheels are 18 by eight and a half uh there's pilot sport two uh Tires, Michelin Pilot Sport 2s, 345 30s on the rear. And, uh, and look at the front. Let's talk about what you did okay. with this uh, dash. That's a stock Trans Am or uh, third gen uh, dash cap. Right, but I replaced the factory dash with a uh, custom made dash uh, that I made in my uh, machine shop. Uh, basically, it's aluminum. Uh, uh, with uh, auto meter gauges, two and five eighths gauges. Uh, it's got uh, vintage air air conditioning, uh, and it's also got a full PC uh, built into the uh, passenger side of the dashboard. So, in the center of the uh, uh, dash is a 10.4 inch LCD screen uh, that uh, is hooked to the computer and also serves as a uh, backup camera screen. Let's hop in and turn it on. Also worthy uh, worthy of note is these uh, these are not third gen Trans Am buckets, but you said these bolted in nicely. Yeah, these are actually fourth uh, uh, gen uh, Trans Am 2001 Trans Am uh, uh, inflatable bolster seats that uh, uh, turns out bolt directly into third gens, so there's no modification of the seat tracks required. Nice. I imagine everybody's dying to hear this thing run. We'll fire it up right at the very end. Let's. Uh... But uh, the the computer boots up as soon as you turn on the ignition. Uh, so the computer right now is displaying the uh, fuel table for the uh, fuel injection computer. It's uh, try to get the glare off the screen. Yeah. It's a Holly Dominator uh, uh, fuel injection ECU and. Uh, uh, has the ability to, uh, of course, work all the um, uh, the fuel injection parameters, but uh, Holly includes a nice gauge display that uh, uh, can be viewed. Uh, That's very cool. While we're driving, let's fire it up. Oh well, those belt three. It's a 200 amp alternator, uh, puts a big load on the belt. Yeah. Very cool. So now if I put the car in reverse, it switches the uh, screen to the backup camera. Oh, nice. Nice. Or, and I can I can manually turn the backup camera on full time okay. if uh, desired. Well, let's take it for a quick cruise. in. It's kind of cool, the car still has stock door handles, but they're they're hidden up underneath that kit. Alright, let's take it for a run. Well, it's got a nice firm feel on the road. suspension it's pretty smooth riding yeah I kind of expected it to be a little more bouncy than this actually can drive 
kind of aggressively. It's a downtown area here, but wrapping up a cool video on a third gen Firebird 1982 rear engine custom built Firebird. We've covered all the bases. Anything else you can think about uh, telling us about your car, Dave? Uh, not too much. It does have Wi Fi on the uh, computer. Nice. This console was a stock Trans Am or a Firebird console you cut down and modified? Exactly, yep. It's, uh, I replaced the, the plastic top with a uh, aluminum top that's covered in nog eye. This is the controls for your uh, air ride here? Yes. And a little touch pad for the uh, computer screen. Mouse control, cool. Watching Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise heading down the road in a very cool third gen car. Thanks for watching.